Thanks, Bethan. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to take you through the modeling side of the catalog, uh, which I will share my screen for. Okay, so yes, Bethan's just talked through the, the data side of things and how you can uh, manage your permissions of things on Daphne. And I'll talk through how to upload a model onto Daphne and then how to go about using that model in a workflow. And Brian already alluded to this in, in his talk earlier, but the way that we take models on board on Daphne is we have a metadata file that explains all the stuff about that model. So uh, the description, the title, what input it takes and that kind of thing. But then we also have a Docker image, which allows us to create a consistent environment for um, the user running that model locally, but also when they upload it onto Daphne, it ensures that it's running in the exact same environment that it would be on their local machine. So we can make sure that the outputs are exactly the same uh, for them as they are for us. So if we go to the model catalog, we can see all of the models that have been uploaded to Daphne so far. A lot of these are pilot models so that we brought on during our pilot program. We did quite a few different pilots at that time to sort of test out the system and um, see what new features were needed. Um, but more recently, we're allowing users to upload their own models. And so a lot of the models you see on this list are, have been uploaded by our users and they managed to do that completely independently of us most of the time, which is, is really good to see because it is quite a complex thing to create a gen generic platform that can take any kind of model in any language. And that's like hopefully what we're getting towards achieving um, with this platform. So if I go over to add a model, I then see this kind of page. So um, it asked me a load of questions as to have I completed all these different steps and these steps link to our own documentation. So if I click on this link, for example, I can see how to write a model definition file and the model definition file is the thing that describes the metadata of your model. So you'll see fairly obvious things in there, like your display name, a summary, a description, the type of your model. And this will tell you all about the, the specification for that uh, and the syntax for that file. Um, and then uh, if we just go back to that page, we can see uh, we have another bit of documentation about how to upload that model. So this is sort of the meat of your model, if you like. The other part is just the metadata and what people see so they can actually find it in the catalog and see if it's going to be useful for their project. Um, and this is how you actually go about taking your Dockerized model and then uploading it onto Daphne. And it will take you through how to zip that up so the upload's a bit quicker um, and then how to actually use the system to, to do the upload. But it is uh, fairly intuitive. So what I've done previously is I created this YAML file. So we use YAML as the format for our uh, definition files. You can also use a JSON. Um, but this essentially is all of the metadata for the COVID-19 COVID SIM model, which came out of Imperial College London. Um, it's quite an old, old version now. I think it's been updated quite a few times since I did this, but um, you can see that we've got a section for input parameters down here. So these all get uh, injected into the container at runtime as environment variables. So um, what I've done in this Python file, which kind of just wraps the model is take those environment variables and chuck them into a config file. So this is all quite technical and not particularly important for this, I suppose. But you can see how you can easily um, create loads of different inputs that the user can change that they then affect the running of your model. Um, and then this is the Docker file, which I'm not sure how many of you would have seen something like this before. But essentially, it's just a, it starts from a from command, which is just a, it tells the Docker container what um, operating system to use. And then you just have a list of commands to run to actually get that operating system um, the packages it needs to be able to run your model. So in this case, um, the model, I think, is written in R. So a lot of this stuff is to install the R stuff needed to, to do that. And I've wrapped that model using Python. So then I've installed a load of Python stuff that I needed for that as well. So if we go back over to the platform, we can confirm that we've completed all those steps now. And then we can browse to files. Um, and that's the YAML file that I showed, and that's the uh, zipped up version of my Docker image. And so I then just press upload and wait for this to complete. But it's probably not worth doing that right now. Um, I have got a pre-existing version of it that I uploaded earlier. 
Um, but what's also worth pointing out, which is a relatively new addition to the platform, is that um, now I could click edit on here and I could just upload a new version of my model. So as the code changes, as we add more parameters to the model, we don't have to create a separate entity every time. We can actually version that model. And so you can see the progression over time of, of that model and users can make use of different versions of, of your model in different workflows. Um, so if we head back to that previous page, I can show you the metadata. So all of this metadata has been sucked through from that YAML file. So it just obviously just looks a bit nicer now because it's on a nice front end. So we can explore these parameters in a bit more detail, but this is all just fueled from, from that YAML file essentially. So now that our model has been uploaded, we can go and actually try and run it. So the way you run a model on Daphne is to use a, a workflow. And uh, these are some of the workflows that our users have been running recently. Um, and so the best way to show you um, the workflow system is to actually just create one. So if we just create a COVID test workflow. That was the metadata for the workflow, but it doesn't matter too much for this. And so now we've got, we can see four different step types that are available to the to the user. So the first step type is an iterator, and that will essentially iterate over a single model multiple times, um, and it will vary a parameter between a, a certain given minimum and maximum value. So um, what you could do here is say, if we want to vary the R number between one and 1.9, we could then do that randomly and we could run like a thousand iterations of that and then we could do some sensitivity analysis of the results to see how much the r number would affect things like uh, mortality rates and hospitalization rates and stuff like that um we won't put in an iterator for now because we'll keep this fairly simple the next step is um to add the model so uh, obviously the the main part of any workflow is probably the model or multiple model steps. And there was a question in the chat earlier about whether you could link multiple models of different languages. And yeah, that's totally something you can do as long as those models have been uploaded to, to Daphne, then essentially what they are to us is just a, a box that you throw some inputs to and get some outputs from. So it's, it's, that's exactly what we designed Daphne to be able to do to like, you know, interpolate between these, these different models. Um, the only caveat to that is obviously if you've got a model that someone else has written and you've got your own model, um, you probably have to do some kind of finagling with the outputs of the first model to make them fit into your second model. Um, but that's something you could just do with an extra modeling step, for example, to, to sort of transform those outputs to be the, the right inputs. Uh, so if we create a model step now, if we go into here, I can all search for a good spell. Select that one. And then we get our list of parameters populated down here as well. So we could choose between country names. We've got a minimum and maximum value for our R number, um, percentage of people that are complying with um, the quarantine restrictions, and how long the government are advising people to isolate for. And you'll see this other box down here for data sets to use in model. So another type of input step um, input type that we have is data sets. So you can set up your model to take in a data set from the catalog that Bethan just showed you. And if that's say a parameters file, you could then upload your own version of that parameters file and swap them out at runtime. Um, so instead of having to configure, you know, thousands and thousands of parameters each time, you could just instead upload a parameters file. Um, so that's what this data set section is down here. So we create that step. So now we've, we could add multiple different models here, but to keep it simple, we'll just do a, we'll get some outputs from it. Cause obviously if we run this at the minute, what will happen is it will run, uh, it will finish and then nothing will happen because we haven't done anything with the outputs. So we need to do either a publish or a visualization step. So a publish step will essentially publish all the outputs that you select into the data catalog that Bethan showed you. Um, those outputs will only be available to you until you choose to share them with other people. Um, so anything by default on Daphne is, is private. So as Bethan said, when you do the data upload, that's by default private to you. When you output stuff from a model workflow, by default, that's private to you as well. So that's how we're trying to uh, keep, keep it all secure. Um, so if we were to run this publish step, we could fill in our metadata that Bethan showed you earlier, and that would then just put, put the entry straight into the data catalog. Uh, with the visualization step, we still publish to the catalog, so we still 
uh, fill out this metadata form, but we also then get a visualization um, at the end. And currently our only visualization option is uh, through Jupyter Notebooks, which I'll, I'll show you in a second. Um, but we're actually currently working on adding an, a new visualization type, which will allow users to drag and drop fields out of their output data and create graphs on the fly. And it's hopefully going to be a much more intuitive way of creating visualizations because at the moment that's a fairly complex thing to do on Daphne, uh, but I will show you how that works. So I could fill in all this metadata and create that step, but I don't think there's much point in doing that since Beth has shown you it already. Uh, so I'm just going to find one that I ran earlier. Well, much, much earlier with the visualization in it. Uh, I should really run this again. So I don't have to scroll through so many entries. But it's testament to how many people are using the platform. So I think that's quite a good thing, actually. So if we press visualize, once our workflow is finished, uh, we can then enter this Jupyter Notebook environment, which hopefully will load. Yes. Um, so these files here uh, are all CSV files. And these are output by the model. So these are essentially the results of our, of our model run. But obviously, they're not particularly obvious what's going on in this massive CSV file. So what you can do on, uh, this is a Jupyter notebook, you can add Python and R scripts, and we've got plenty of packages installed, which um, will allow you to do visualizations with Python and R. And so here I've just borrowed a load of code from Imperial themselves, and this is the code that they use to run their visualizations. So I can press play on that. And then this will produce some nice graphs for us to be able to uh, view our results in a bit more detail. So you can see how with this, it, you can see how a technical user could easily sort of use this to create a visualization, but non-technical -te users might struggle a bit because they don't necessarily know how to write Python or, or R. And so that's why we're working on providing this more intuitive type visualization, which will allow people to just drag and drop stuff across and create similar visualizations to this. Um, but hopefully that gives you a good overview of the modeling and visualization side of things. And yeah, I'm happy to, happy to leave it there.